All right, folks, welcome back to Prepping with Sarge. So if you watched yesterday's video, I was talking to you about OPSEC and being aware of the possibility for looters after a hurricane. So today we are going to talk about all of the preps that you forgot. I'm going to get you covered here, right? So I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour. But before we even get to that, there's a couple things that I want to go over real quick that you should always do if you hear that there might be a hurricane and it might be on the trajectory towards you. Okay, these are the first few things. So go and get your gasoline right away. Because in my experience, I learned this lesson the hard way my first year here, uh, that's the first thing that is going to be really, really hard to get. Everybody thinks, you know, bread, milk, eggs, eh, no, gasoline. Get your gasoline because there will be a run on it and it's going to be really hard to get. And if you do decide, like last minute you decide, you know what, I'm out of Dodge, I'm bugging out. Good luck because you're not going to find gasoline for 200 miles, okay? They've seen this and people have had to weather out big storms like category three and above on the highway with their family in their car. Does that sound like fun? No, it's probably not. So go and get your gasoline first. Next thing I want you to do is go to the ATM and take out some money. If the bank is open, even better because you want to get some small bills, 20s, 10s, fives and ones and if you can good luck right now in 2020 get yourself a little bit of coins too okay the reason i want you to have some cash is if you're bugging in when the power goes out some stores will reopen and they will do business by cash only okay so that's number two thing thing number one get your gas thing number <laughs> thing number two get some cash okay small bills especially uh, thing number three, if you plan to bug in, check your propane, because in my experience, there's a huge run on propane as well for your grill, right? That's probably something you should do at the start of hurricane season anyways. We're going to take you on a little bit of tour, and I'm going to show you some of the, the preps. we got a lot of stuff to cover today, but I'm going to try to cover everything that I know you forgot. Stay with me now. Okay, and file this one under uh, highly recommended and optional. So a good weather radio, make sure you charge it up and test it before the storm. And then if you like to listen to emergency services and disaster radio and that kind of stuff, get you know you can get yourself one of these little biofang. Um, yes, I need to work on my license. No, I don't talk, I just listen. Uh, we'll talk about that another day. Make sure you do all of your laundry well in advance of the storm. If you lose power, it is, it is not impossible, obviously, to do it without a washing machine, but it's a real pain, especially towels. Make sure all your towels are done. You, if something hits your roof and you get a little leak, you're going to want those towels, trust me. Uh, one good thing to keep on hand is some five-gallon buckets for two reasons. Number one, if you get a little roof leak, you're going to kind of want something like this to catch it, you know, if a branch hits your roof and... All of a sudden you got water coming in in the middle of a storm you're not going to get up on that roof you're probably just going to be doing some damage control so you want to have some of these but also if you if there's a bad storm coming in and they predict that they're going to have to shut off the water the you know you could you could store up some five gallon buckets full of water and use that for all kinds of purposes especially cleaning things like that okay make sure you've got some yard debris bags depending on your municipality there's probably some regulations on that when they for here where i'm living they want us to use these so you, after the, after the storm, you're going to need, we, I think we used 20 after one of the hurricanes and then 30 another time. So you're going to need quite a bit of these. Make sure you're well stocked. You take a trip around your house and all this kind of stuff that's just loose, you want to bring in, put it in the garage or your shed. Uh, if you've got swings like that, like a porch swing, you definitely want to take that down and you're going to bring it in. And, you know, just other, anything that they could, the wind could take and just toss around, you want to get off get inside, get it, get it into shelter. If you can, you want to bring in your trash and recycling bins into the garage or into a shed. If you can't do that, tie them down and tie them to something really sturdy. Being that I'm an avid gardener, I always have a lot of mulch around. This actually can be used in a pinch if you did not have time to get sandbags. All right. And a lot of people will go crazy trying to find bottled water. Uh, you certainly don't have to do that. You know, get creative. Everybody's got containers around the house. I know all my prepper friends have tons of these guys. Fill that up, fill all your water bottles. These here are, are sold at Walmart, and I bought them specifically for hurricanes. So basically, I'm gonna fill these up. I'm gonna wait to the last minute on this. This, is one of, this will be one of my last preps. But basically, fill these up, and then it's got a little spigot down the end. I put it over my kitchen sink and you can wash your hands or wash you know wash a cup or whatever and 
it just gives you some different options, especially if they're, you know, if the water has to get turned off for some reason. If you're a beer drinker, I know you've got a bunch of these guys lying around, right? So just get creative. You know, what about something like that? Fill that with water, right? So, you know, there's there's all kinds of different options. You just got to think outside the box a little bit. Now, onto the next thing that's related to that. I usually take all of these that I've got lying around, these little, you know, glad containers or, or whatever they're called, and I'll fill these with water, put them in the freezer to take up as much space as possible. The reason you want to do that, you want your freezer to be as full as possible when the power goes out because the you know by having giant blocks of ice in there like that it actually will slow down the rate at which everything's thawing out hopefully save you from having to toss out all your food you can also take it out and put it in the refrigerator to keep stuff that's in the refrigerator cold and if it's 100 degrees out or 90 degrees out like it is in charleston if we lose power and there's no ac you know something like that that's filled with water halfway and frozen uh, i can use that to cool myself down Make sure you've done all of your dishes before the storm hits as well, especially if you've got a dishwasher. You, you know, certainly you can wash them by hand, but are you really going to want to when you've got a yard full of debris out there that you got to clean up and you're going to be stressed out? You know, just save yourself one, one thing and have your dishes all done in advance. I'm not typically a fan of like disposable utensils and disposable plates. It's bad for the environment. I'm willing to make an exception given the stressful situation of, you know, you just survived a hurricane, right? And so you're allowed to take a day off from that kind of stuff. If it really bothers you, you can buy the recyclable stuff. There are options that are more earth friendly. The only reason that I might use the, the disposable stuff during a time of a hurricane is really just to give yourself a break. You know, you're going to be super stressed out in the aftermath. You're going to have a ton of work to do with cleanup and probably possibly some home repairs, things like that. So you know what? If I don't have to do the dishes for a couple days, I'm going to take that out and just go with it. Make sure that all of your phones, your laptops, your tablets, everything is charged up to max capacity. If you don't use your laptop, you can actually use that to charge up your phone too if you've got the right cords or your tablets or your kids' tablets, you know, which if you've got kids, that's a whole other consideration. You probably want to have all of their gaming systems and stuff that they can use without internet connection fully charged up. Okay, regarding your fleet of flashlights and power banks. So what I'm gonna recommend is that every, every member of your household has one of these headsets. This is for, you need to have your hands free. Basically, that's what this is for. Every, every member of the household should have one of these. Check your batteries and then have at least a couple sets of backup batteries. And then everybody should have a decent handheld, right? So I'm gonna say get the, get the best one that you can afford. I am a huge fan of Olights. I will put a link in the description. If you decide to order an Olight, you'll get $10 off and I will get a little store credit, which is really appreciated by me. It's one of the few ways you can help my channel because I'm not monetized right now, but get the best flashlight you can afford. So out XC, you've seen me, you've seen me talk about those power banks before. I have a couple more that are just topping off the battery right now. These are fantastic, right? And so I can run fans off this. I can run my ring light off this, which I'm gonna show you in just a bit. Um, I can charge up my flashlights off this. I can charge my phone off this. Uh, you could probably charge some of your kids, you know, little tablets, things like that. They're gaming tab tablets. So get yourself a few of these. I have four of the, the good 20,000 milliamp and a few smaller ones. I honestly wouldn't mind adding some more, to be honest. They're, they're just such a nice thing to have in your system. And then if you're an Olight fan, you know what these guys are for, right? So that kind of goes back to our uh, what we talked about yesterday, doesn't it? These, these here are really old. These are 10, 10 years old. And so there's newer technology that's better than this. And at some point I will upgrade these, but I want to show you these real quick because these are kind of cool too. All right, so what's really cool about these is, sorry about the echo in here, this is kind of an empty room. What's really cool about these is you can set these up around your house to be plugged in and they will, as soon as the, and they, they charge up by being plugged in and when the power goes out, they'll be the first things that come on. They automatically come on. So let me pull out the power here and I'll show you what happens. See how that comes on? So this is kind of a cool one. You can get a few of these, plug them in around the house, especially in hallways or bathrooms 
and you're pretty much gonna like it's not a ton of light this is this is really weak technology compared to the new stuff I, I can make do with this for now you know take a look in your store i'm sure there's something similar to that those were energizers but i'm sure there's something similar and i'm sure the technology is much better than when i bought these 10 years ago we just kind of plug these around the hallways and stuff like that so when the light, lights go out you're not suddenly caught off guard and tripping and falling this is one that a lot of people will forget but check the batteries in your smoke detectors your carbon monoxide, there's gonna be a lot of lightning flashing when there's a storm going on. So uh, transformers pop and that energy can surge back into the house. I actually know people that's happened to. So check your smoke detectors, your carbon monoxide. Out XC camping fan. I love this little guy. In fact, there's an upgrade to this, this, this mini fan. This will run basically all night long. Give me a little bit of cooling and some sound so that I can actually get a little bit of sleep when the power's out. But there's an upgraded one which I need to get which actually has a better, better lighting. This does, this does have lighting but it's modeled because the lighting's on the inside. The newer one has the lighting on the outside. Uh, and in a pinch, this also is a battery bank. I could charge, off my, charge my phone off of this too. I don't use that this way, I use this for the fan. YouTubers will know what this is. This is a ring light and it actually puts out quite a bit of light. Sorry there, wow. Sorry, <laughs> sorry if I blinded out the camera there. This actually, and this one in particular, I like because it can be run through a USB plug. Let me show you. So this can be plugged into my power banks and run off of that. So, and it's very, very, it doesn't get hot. It stays, it stays cool to the touch. So I can run this all night long and light up a room. And I can run this in my windows at nighttime and everyone's gonna know, hey, this house is occupied. Let's not, you know, let's not loot here, basically. If you go back to that video, I'm gonna link that other video in description, just in case anyone didn't see it, you can check that out. Okay, and just to give you kind of an idea, that's the ring light from my front window. The camera's never gonna do this justice, but trust me, that's actually lighting up like half of the front yard right now. It's, it's pretty bright. And if the power was out all around me, that would be extremely bright. Check your power tools before the storm arrives. Charge up anything that needs to be charge up, charged up, like those little battery packs from my chainsaw, and uh, make sure that that's good to go. You don't want to have, you know, a little tree limb fall, and then you realize your chainsaw, all the battery packs are drained out. You know, it's kind of nice. You can, certainly can work without a power drill, but it's kind of a nice thing to have if you're boarding up a window real quick. Make sure you've got plenty of books, games, craft supplies, art supplies, whatever you need. At some point, if it's a prolonged power outage, and this storm's probably not gonna do that in, in the coastal United States, but other storms can. I mean, after Hurricane Hugo, the people in Charleston without, were without power for weeks. Katrina, weeks, right? So the big storms, the Category 5 ones, will knock out infra infrastructure long past when you're all of your battery banks and probably your fuel for your generator and all of these things have been exhausted. So have a good supply of books, games, craft supplies, things that you can do recreationally for you and your children if you have them to keep you busy when power is no longer there. Okay, regarding pets, make sure that you have an ample supply of pet food and pet comfort food, right? Because, you know, humans want their stress food when there's a storm going on, so do the pets. If your pets are on any medicine, make sure you have that well in advance of the storm arriving. We also recommend that you have their papers for all their vaccinations and everything like that in case you had to do a last minute bug out. Have their crates ready to go with uh, those papers or copies of those papers nearby so that you can grab them, put them in their crates, get their collar, get their license, and throw some food in there, ready to go, throw it in the car uh, in case you have to make a quick bug out. All right, so this is just to kind of give you some ideas. Obviously, uh, you should have some canned goods, you should have some dried goods, some rice and beans and honey and oats and things like that. Pasta, pasta sauce, stuff that's easy to make and has really long shelf life. But everybody, when, when you're going through a hurricane, you're going to get high cortisol, which is going to make you crave sweets and calorie dense foods. Most people, they call them hurricane snacks here. Most people blow through their hurricane snacks in the hours leading up to the hurricane. You'll eat an, un, an unreal amount of calories. You, you're gonna be shocked and it's because of the cortisol, it's natural. So this is just kind of give you some ideas. You know, you can have some, some healthier options like raisin. I also recommend that you have like some grab and go kind of meal replacement kind of things. You know, like bars and things like that. My wife likes these pure protein bars. 
I like Quest. The reason for that is you are, again, in the aftermath of a hurricane, you're probably going to be doing a lot of yard work. You may not even feel like cooking, even if you've got the stuff. So having some stuff you can just grab, pull out of the wrapper and eat, you know, you may be grateful for that. If also, if you decide to do a last minute, like, oh, this is, this was a bad decision. Let's get in the car and go, you, you know, having some stuff in there, like, like that, that, and the pure protein bars, you know, you can, you can eat while you're going. Cause you might be driving all night long, just trying to find a hotel. Uh, and, and yes, it's really like that. There'll be no hotels in your state that have vacancy. I promise you from experience, that's true. Okay. Uh, one more thing over here. Let's take a look at this real quick. So if you're a caffeine addict like me, have some options for when you can't brew your coffee. Obviously you can do instant coffee, but this tastes a whole lot better than instant coffee. I also make a pot up the night before the storm is about to hit and put it in the fridge because I like cold coffee. So I've got at least you know, a full day's supply of coffee, and then I've got some of that to rely on. So before I even have to get into the instant coffee, I've still got good stuff, all right? Okay, also for lighting up a room, these are some of the options that we use. These are all battery operated, and they'll throw off enough light that you can sit there and you can read. Uh, from the outside, it definitely is obvious that there's somebody inside. In my experience that, you know, this will, these will run all night long without running out of batteries. We've definitely, we've tested that several times. Now let me show you these little Nebo lights here. This is kind of cool. So these little Nebo lights, it's uh, N-E-B-O. Let me see if there's a logo on here. I don't know, I, I had one last year and I liked it so much I added two more. So it's 300 lumens as a, as a lantern. Okay, so that's enough for a small room. And then this can collapse, right? And you've got a little spotlight for searching in the yard, that kind of thing. These are pretty cool and you should be able to find these at like Dick's Sporting Goods and places like that. And I'm pretty sure they're online too. Oh, it's called a Nebo Poppy. That's what it is, Nebo Poppy, N-E-B-O. If I can find it on Amazon, I'll put a link to that one too. Okay, so these are really cool. I liked it so much that I had one, I ended up going out and getting two more. All right, All right. and if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and drop a like. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I drop videos at least twice a week. Please comment down below if there's a prep that you think I missed. I would really appreciate that. Let's keep adding to this list. So it's a couple more thoughts and then we're gonna, we're gonna finish this out. Even if you think you're bugging in, check your tire pressure as soon as you go to get the gas, check your tire pressure. Um, you know, if there's any maintenance to the car, you should have already done it, but if there's something that you can f quickly fix, go ahead and do it now. Uh, that's because there's been a few times where people have said, you know what, I'm bugging in, I'm bugging in, I'm bugging in. Last minute, the weather, the spaghetti model changes and something disastrous is about to happen. They're like, nope, I'm out of here, boom. And so you wanna have that car, this is the next part of that, you wanna have your car packed up and ready to go, just in case. Even if you're bugging in, put some stuff in there that you know you're gonna need, like maybe the pet crates or things like that. All right, um, take pictures of all your important documents in case there's massive flooding or tree lands on your house, you wanna have that information. And also take pictures of your valuables, you might need that for insurance. One more thing, so if you are on any kind of prescription medications, you wanna have that on hand you know, get that filled as soon as you know a storm's coming. A lot of times in most states, they'll let you fill them early when something like this is going on. And to go along with that, also make sure you've had a well-stocked first aid kit. There are some injuries that can happen, even if you're bugging in, where, you know, a tree limb comes flying through your window, all of a sudden glass goes everywhere, you might be treating cuts because the EMTs can't get to you or, or they may be significantly delayed in getting to you in the middle of a storm. Take those first aid classes that we've been talking about. Have a good comprehensive first aid kit and know how to use it. Sometimes there's electrical fire, so know how to treat some burns. Know how to treat a mechanical injury if somebody accidentally breaks a leg or uh, sprains an ankle or all kinds of things can go wrong. That's the scariest thing I think for people is when you're bugging in, help may be delayed. You, so you really do need to work on these prepping skills, including first aid. I think that's about it. But again, comment down below if you think of any hurricane preps that I missed. Keep planting your seeds. Keep stacking your silver. This is Prepping with Sarge.